In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. As we enter into this first Saturday meditation upon the mystery of the Assumption, as we enter into these 15 minutes, let's pause for a minute of silence to lay aside other considerations and simply become aware of the living presence of your good Heavenly Mother, who right now is by your side and who wishes to guide you through the meditation upon these this mystery and also the presence of our Savior whose sacred heart is full of an abundance of graces he wants to pour out right now. At the end of Our Lady's earthly pilgrimage, she was assumed body and soul into heaven. She may have fallen asleep very peacefully, and that's why one very early tradition calls the mystery of the Assumption her dormition, that is her falling peacefully asleep and then being carried body and soul into heaven. And surely St. John would have been by her side as that moment was approaching, perhaps even right when it took place. And it may have been that the other apostles also sensing the, that Our Lady's uh, being called to heaven was very near. The other apostles may well have come to pray by her side, to ask her for last pieces of advice, for prayers, for words of wisdom. But then the greatest moment of Our Lady's life took place when she was reunited body and soul with her divine son in heaven. And there's no words adequate to express the joy and fullness of life of that reunion. Of that reunion and now uh, a fullness of life ever new. You could say a great adventure, even more wonderful than the great adventures of this earth. Much more wonderful even than the most beautiful, joyful moments of Nazareth, of all the times in the house there, of the moment even of our Lord's resurrection, better than all of that was the joy of that first moment and the joy of every moment thereafter. So right now, as we're spending this first Saturday meditation, Our Lady is rejoicing with her Son with a fullness of life we can't imagine. We tend to think of a reunion as Our Lady, uh, where anyone, you, you meet someone, there's a great joy, but then you sort of go about your business or there's not there's no longer that incredible joy of the first reunion, but that's not the case with Our Lady. She is living a fullness of this divine friendship with her son we can't even begin to imagine. And the fruit of this mystery traditionally is an increase of devotion to Our Lady. And so let's take, let's meditate on what can help us grow in that devotion, look more deeply at some of the hidden mysteries of Our Lady's Assumption and at the whole relationship between her and her son that's the key to this. First of all, looking at the hidden life at Nazareth. It's a great mystery that our Lord chose to spend the 90%, more than that, of his earthly life with the one who you could say needed him the least, that is Our Lady, in terms of needing conversion or help in so many ways, she was the Immaculate One. In a sense, she, she needed him much less than anyone else. And yet he chose to devote the vast, vast majority of his life and teaching and graces to her, basically alone with her. First of all, with St. Joseph, but then in the remaining years, just with her. Why is that? And what was that like? Well, Our Lady has the unique role of being the mother of the church, being the queen of heaven and earth. And so he was preparing her for that great role, the role of co-redemptrix at the foot of the cross. But beyond that, 
the goal of our Lord's coming to earth was to draw hearts to believe in him, to hope in him, in him and especially to love him. The very goal of all of his ministry was to have this divine friendship flourish with souls. And with Our Lady, that took place far more than with anyone else. Every single moment, she was never inattentive or, or had a hard heart or callous or anything. On the contrary, she was constantly responding and growing more and more, uh, growing incredibly fast every moment in the divine friendship, in holiness, in grace. And so let's take a f some time, some extended time right now in silence to meditate upon the different moments of that daily life at Nazareth. Think about when they would sit down for meals for so many years. What was it like for Our Lady to cook and serve Our Lord and for them to eat together, to eat together with St. Joseph and then later on just with her? What were those conversations like? What, was, what were those meals like? What was it like as they prayed together in the evening or in the morning or watched a sunset or a sunrise or rejoiced in the beauty of the different seasons? or as they worked, as our Lord worked at the workbench, Our Lady in the house, um, perhaps as they prepared things for a relative's wedding or funeral, as they sang hymns together and psalms. Take some time now to think about, meditate upon the thousand and one different aspects of this daily life and how our Lord's Sacred Heart and Our Lady's Immaculate Heart grew ever more in this great divine friendship. Ave Maria Dei Mater Alma Atque Semper Virgo Felix Soli Divine friendship with our Lord blossomed throughout all of Our Lady's life and then reached its summit as she entered into the glory of heaven as our Lord brought her body and soul into heaven. And that's a unique grace. All the rest of us 
our bodies will have to wait until the end of time. And at the resurrection, uh, at the end of time, at the final judgment and the resurrection, our bodies will be reunited with our souls, either in heaven or in hell. But Our Lady, why did Our Lord give this grace to Our Lady? It wasn't, strictly speaking, necessary. He could have given her the full joy of heaven in just her soul. But it speaks to how much, uh, I think, the eagerness of, our, of a son's love, of wanting to offer her already with her body in heaven, that joy as well. And our bodies will be a key part of the joy in heaven, even if the, the, the highest joys of heaven uh, will be experienced with the soul, our bodies will be true bodies, will be real bodies. And so Our Lady experiences that right now. And we don't know what that is like between Our Lord's divine risen body and Our, Lord, Our Lady's glorious body. Is there some version of an embrace that somehow takes place in heaven? Uh, we hope to find out one day. But St. Thomas Aquinas thinks that all of the five senses will be fully participating in the joy of heaven. E for example, even though we won't need food, he thinks that our sense of taste will somehow be, be even more than in the best meal on the earth, rejoicing, enjoying um, the joy of taste. So if that's true, how much more simple things such as a, a warm embrace between a mother and a son, how much more will there be some greater realization of that, whatever that may be like in heaven. And so take a few moments now to adore this beautiful mystery of Our Lady being reunited with her son, also with her body, encountering him in his risen body in heaven. Salve Regina, Mater Misericordiae, Vita Dulcedo, et spes nostra salve. we contemplate the joy of Our Lady being reunited with her Son in heaven, and that joy that continues and flourishes right now as we're praying, that also offers a key to the spiritual life. When moments arrive with crosses in our life, or if you feel weighed down by different sufferings, by unhappiness in various forms, you can always choose to turn the gaze of your soul towards heaven and say, I rejoice because my good heavenly mother is so happy right now. When we love someone, whether it's a dear friend or whether it's a, a child or one of our parents, then knowing that they're happy, that they're thriving is a great joy for us if we really love them. And you see that, for example, in parents with their children, that the, the the mother or father might have to sacrifice a great deal and even be in a lot of pain. But if they know that their son or daughter is very happy right now, then they rejoice in that and they can even forget about their pain or consider it very secondary. And how much more should we do that with our Heavenly Mother? The more that we love her, the more that should help us have a joy which nothing on this earth can touch. And the more we choose that, not just in very difficult moments, but even in joyful moments for us to, to turn our gaze on a regular basis towards the joy of Our Lady in Heaven, it helps 
establish our heart or the treasure of our heart in heaven, in a place which nothing can touch. And so let's take a few moments now to give thanks to God for this grace he gave Our Lady of her assumption. Let us thank our Heavenly Father, thank our Lord for giving our good Heavenly Mother such a wonderful, beautiful, joyful grace. As these 15 minutes draw to a close, you can ask Our Lady, well, we, of course, in a moment, in this silence, you should thank our Lord for all the graces he poured out into your soul. But before doing that, I'd invite you to take a few moments to ask Our Lady to help you throughout your day, to turn your gaze to her more often. You might speak to her about a couple particular moments of your day or situations which are especially hard for you and say, in the midst of these moments, please help me to turn the gaze of my heart towards you in heaven and to find joy in your joy. Let's take a few moments now to do that and also to thank our Lord for all the graces he's given during this meditation. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, nunc et in hora mortis nostre. Amen. Ave Maria, gratia plena, Dominus tecum, benedicta tu in mulieribus, et benedictus fructus ventris tui, Jesus. Santa Maria, Mater Dei, ora pro nobis peccatoribus, Nunca et in hora mortis nostre.